Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. I just got an accent, how weird was that? My name is Mr. Hughes and we serve up learning on the internets good and special for you, crispy and crunchy. Um, we're gonna do the court packing plan of 1937, FDR's famous court packing plan. Explain it to you in everyday language so you know it forever. So this is perfect if you're in a United States history course. It could even really be middle school, high school, or college. It's gonna be on the exam. Cross my heart, hope to die. Um, but if you're living in your parents' basement, you got a big bowl of Cheetos and you're just watching, you can keep watching. It'll make you a little bit smarter. It might even be on Jeopardy, who knows. So, are you ready? I'm ready. So, on your marks, get set, let the learning go. Go. All right, so really basic information. Um, FDR is elected in 1932. He feels as though he has a mandate to attack the problems of the Great Depression. He goes through a series of uh, New Deal successes um, early in his presidency. Uh, we look at him closing the banks and um, the implementation later on of the FDIC, uh, the Tennessee Valley Authority, the Civilian Conservation Corps, the Work Progress Administration. He really is kind of doing pretty good in terms of getting his New Deal programs passed and really not having too many judicial challenges, um, but that's going to change. And that's going to change um, on multiple of fronts, but the two big ones, the ones that are definitely going to be on the test, are going to be the National Recovery Act and the Agricultural Adjustment Act, the NRA um, and the AAA. These two programs are going to be found to be unconstitutional. And of course, this is an unwritten judicial review power that springs from Marbury versus Madison, one of those early John Marshall cases. And the Supreme Court is basically looking at challenges to the law based on their constitutionality. Is the President and Congress going too far with this piece of legislation? All right, guys, let's look at two Supreme Court cases that um, found New Deal programs to be unconstitutional, and we're going to keep it really simple. Um, one of the court cases, Shetner Poultry versus United States. This found the NRA, the National Recovery Act, had exceeded its constitutional bounds. It was unconstitutional. It's based on the Interstate Commerce Clause. We're not going to get into it. And the other court case you can see up there is Butler versus United States. And this knocked down the AAA, or the Agricultural Adjustment Agency, based on an unconstitutional tax. We don't have to really understand those court cases other than to use them to illustrate that the New Deal is being found unconstitutional. And this is where FDR just flips his lid, right? He goes nuts. What do they know? What do they know? So he comes up with this court packing plan. And we're not going to get, again, too much into the weeds here, but um, basically uh, I think it was if any Supreme Court justice that was serving for 10 years, um, was 70 years old, didn't retire in six months, that he could appoint a new Supreme Court justice up to six justices. And he used kind of the argument that you needed more justices because there's more cases and it's kind of an aging court. We need to get some young blood in there. But of course, this is really blatant, guys. He wants to change the court because he wants to change the ruling. Um, and this is where we get the negative kind of connotations of uh, separation of powers. It looks like it's violating that. Checks and balances. It looks like it's violating that. And even though it's technically not unconstitutional because you can ask Congress to pass a law, it stinks. Um, FDR, I think, made a mistake doing this. Not only because of those reasons, it's going to feed the fire. You already have people calling him a socialist and he's tyrannical, he's a dictator. Sounds familiar of current day politics, right? Kind of really extreme language, but that feeds the fire. It makes it look like he's kind of doing this. Look at the cartoon up there, right? It's that idea that if we let him do this, what's next? Ho, ho, ho. So make sure that you understand that. Now, what actually happened at the end of the day, because we're gonna wrap this up, we're keeping this simple, court packet. Right? The Democrats control two branches. What are they trying to do? Change that third branch. That's why we call it court packing. Um, technically, it's called the Judiciary Reform Act. Of 1937. Man, I hope that's right. I just always call it the court packing plan. But the words are up there. So if I made a mistake, I could change it. Um, but at the end of the day, the bill actually dies in the Senate. Um, the leader of the Senate, I believe, had a heart attack, and he was kind of spearheading the, you know, the, the move. And you already had public opinion, you know, I'm changing. So with the death of the uh, majority leader in the Senate, the bill just kind of, kind of went away. 
Um, and I think it's important to understand that not only that, but FDR um, really, I think, messed up his second term a little bit. This is in 1937. He just took over again, right, his second election, and uh, now he's getting knocked down with his court packing plan. Public opinion is dropping a little bit, and it really took some of his mojo away in terms of passing New Deal legislation. So that might have been a mistake. So make sure that you understand the court packing plan. I just talk too much, guys. So, court packing plan, 1937 FDR, separation of powers, you can write about it, you know it. Glory be. So there we go. Make sure you check the description below because Mr. Hip Hughes down there has listed a whole bunch of EDU gurus and EDU superstars that you should go subscribe to their pages because we want to make YouTube more than fuzzy cats. Even though fuzzy cats are really cute and gangster style videos and all that nuts, I'm done. Take a fourth in Hughes, he's done. There we go. See where attention goes, energy flows. I'm going on fire, yeah.